Section 10.1, we're going to finish today. It's going to look very familiar to stuff that you have already seen, just like yesterday should have, okay? Today's going to be a little longer just because we have a couple more things to do, but it's nothing terrible. We're going to write the standard equation of a sphere, right? Let's think about the shape of a sphere. What does it look like? Like Earth, okay? It's like a ball, right? Here's the standard equation of a sphere. Have you seen something that looks similar to this? It just looks just like a circle one, right? There's just one extra dimension. A circle is 2D, so is our H and our K, X and Y. Now that we're adding the third dimension, so it's a 3D object, now we're introducing another variable. So your center would be at your H, K, and now J. Does that make sense? Okay. And then your radius is still the radius. So it is exactly like the equation of a circle. Except now we just introduced that third variable, the z, because it's a 3D object. All right? Does anybody have any questions about that? So if you are writing, if you are writing your equation of a sphere, given this point, might be easy. Hi. Might be easy if you want to go ahead and say, okay, here is my x, here is my y, here is my z, right? So if we're going to write the standard form, it's x minus or plus, minus or plus guys, minus just like a circle. So X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared plus what? Z minus J squared equals our radius squared. Do we have all of the information we need to write this equation? Yes, you have your X, your Y, your Z, and you have your radius. So just fill in. So this would be, x minus what? 2 squared plus what? Y minus, 4. y minus 4 squared plus z minus 3 squared equals, where'd you get 9? 3 squared. Perfect. If any of those <clears throat> values, your x, y, your z, if they were negative when you put it into the formula, what would the sign be? Positive. Good. Two negatives give you positive. Uh, does anyone have any questions about that? No? Good deal. Good deal. All right. So God bless you. That's what our sphere was like. All right. A couple more examples. We have three more examples. So the first, three or two? Just two. Just kidding. Um, I think I duplicated a slide. So we're not going to do the same example twice. <laughs> My apologies. All right. Here's the equation. It says find the center and the radius. So if it's a sphere, your center is going to be at x y z and then your radius is how far from a point on the sphere to the middle of like think of like your basketball or something. <coughs> so guys this doesn't look like what we just did does it no but we have done a problem that's very similar to this do you remember how to complete the square we're gonna do the same thing now instead of two variables we have three so we want to collect our variables first so i have x squared and then what else goes with my x squared minus 2x you guys agree Okay, then I'm going to say plus a box because we're going to complete the square. Now let's get our y's together. So you have plus, it's a positive, so y squared plus 4y, good, complete the box. And then now we get our z's together. It's a positive z squared minus 6z plus your box, good. And then what do I do with this 8? Move it to the other side. When I do, what does it become? Negative, Negative 8. Perfect, guys. So now we're going to complete the square three times. Same exact thing we've done before <clears throat> when we had a circle, but we had two variables. Now we have three because it's a 3D object. So we're going to take our B term. In this case, it's what number? What kind of two? Negative. Negative two. Very good. And you divide that by two. So what do we get? Negative one. So right now I know what's going to go in my parentheses. I have X minus one squared, correct? And then we square one or square negative one, I should say. When I square negative one, what do I get? Plus one. We have to be fair. What we do to one side of the equation, we do where? Yeah. So I'm going to add one over here. Questions? All right. Now I have a big old plus sign in the middle. Now we're going to complete the square with the y. So I take my b term, divide it by two. What number do I get? Positive two, right? So what goes right here in my, what goes, what does my parentheses say? X plus two squared. Perfect. Yep. I don't know why I put an X. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. So y plus 2. 
Now I'm going to square two. What is two squared? So I'm going to add four here. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Perfect. Now I have a big old plus sign, and we're going to do the same thing, but with our z. So I'm going to take my b term, which is negative 6, and divide it by 2. What do I get? Negative 3. So my parenthesis is z minus 3 squared. <clears throat> now when we square negative 3, what do we get? 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Perfect, guys. Whoops. <clears throat> Let's add. What's negative 8 plus 1? Negative 7 plus 4. Negative 3 plus 9 six. equals 6. So now, are we in standard form of a sphere? Yes. What is your center of your sphere? 1, comma, negative 2, comma, positive 3. Agreed. That's your center. Remember, when we take, <clears throat> take our values out, you change the signs. And then what is our radius? It's, what is your radius? It's the square root of 6. Does that break down? No. no. So we just leave it. It's the square root. Remember, that's r squared. If it was 12, it'd be square root of 12, you break it down. Um, what is it like? Does it have like a plus or minus something y? Like, because it's like plus 4y, like what if you didn't have that? Then you, it, w it wouldn't be like that because then you wouldn't be able to complete the square. Oh. Or, if it, or you can count it as 0. So then it would just be zero, right? So plus or minus. All right, questions. All right, now we're going to do this last example, okay? And it says finding the trace of a surface. This explains to you what, what you're finding in this case. All right, it says <clears throat> if you're finding the surface in space, finding the intersection of a surface within one of the three coordinate planes, x, y, and z, helps you visualize the surface. The intersection is called the trace of the surface. When it asks you to find the trace, it will denote what plane it wants, whether it's the X, Y, whether it's the Y, Z, whatever. What you guys need to understand, if you're looking at a picture, the trace, look, it's just kind of like the circle that's at the top or the bottom. It's, it's around the center. How you find that? Well, first of all, look at what they're asking you for. They want the trace of what? x, y. What is not included in that z? Whatever is not included, you set equal to zero. So I'm going to say this, not included, set equal to zero. And you'll see what I mean by that. If they ask for the <coughs> trace and the, like the y, z trace, what would you set equal to zero? x. If they say for the x, z trace, what would you set equal to zero? Y. So watch what I mean by that. They're asking for the X, Y. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to say, okay, X minus 3 squared plus Y minus 2 squared plus what? 0 plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, which is 25. So now you're going to simplify. When I simplify this, I can't do anything with X minus 3 squared. I'm just going to leave it. I can't do anything with y minus 2 squared. I'm just going to leave it. Can I simplify 0 plus 4 squared? What is it? 4 squared, which is 16 equals 25. Can I simplify this a little more? What could I do? I could subtract the 16, could I not? So I have x minus 3 squared, e, no, not equals, plus y minus 2 squared equals what? 9. Nine. Now, one more thing to write your trace of the whatever plane they're asking you for in its most simplest form. How did they write 25 in the original as 5 squared? So how could you rewrite this? Yep. x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals, what's another way to write 9? 3 squared. Perfect. <laughs> it's all stuff you've seen before. We're just going from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. Tomorrow and Thursday, we're going to talk about 10.2 as vectors. 
It's the same thing we did with dot product and all that stuff. But instead of just I and J, you're going to have three letters. So we're going to add, subtract, refine dot products, all that stuff. Same thing you've done before. Just instead of two, a vector with two, like instead of it being like this, one, negative three, your vector would be like one, negative three, and six. And if you were adding it to another one, right, two, negative four, and five. If you were adding these, what would you add together? One and what? which would give you three. Negative three and negative four would give you, and then six and five would give you, oh my gosh, easy, right? All right, that is it. Hold on a sec. You guys have a web assigned. Get working on it. You can work together, that's fine. But get this done. Get it done and submitted, please. And then we'll start on 10.2 tomorrow.